Good afternoon, everyone. The election is over, but it's still the economy that divides the power players in Washington. While there have been calls for bipartisan efforts, the president and House speakers still don't see eye to eye on taxes. And as ABC's Karen Travis tells us, both sides have to act fast to keep the economy from falling off a fiscal cliff. In an exclusive interview yesterday with ABC's Diane Sawyer, House Speaker John Boehner seemed to draw a line in the sand. As the YMCA of North Central Florida deals with this financial hardships, one of their old facilities is getting a new lease on life. The McGurn Family YMCA complex was one of the first casualties of the Y's bankruptcy filing. It was put up for sale as the Y tries to climb its way back out of bankruptcy. But after sitting neglected for months, a mother and daughter team now has plans to turn that facility into Gainesville's newest charter school. Megan Lane, along with her mother, Kay Abbott, plan on making their new charter school into one of the county's first ever year-round schools. The problem is a lot of kids are reading below grade level, and if you have, you know, more hours of instruction with the extended day and more um, school days in the school year, it can't, it, you know, it has to help bring them up a little bit. I've never seen this done. Um, uh, they have a good rationale for doing it this way, so we will see how that works out. Well, police now know the names of the two men who were shot in Ocala, but are still trying to identify the gunmen. 30-year-old Sean McCray and 24-year-old Terry Owens were dumped out of a car at a repair shop on County Road 484. Police officers think McCray and Owens were shot at a home on Southwest 2nd Street and then dropped off miles away. A 2012 silver Nissan rental car was found in Orlando, and officers believe the shooter may have been driving that car. McCray and Owens, who are from Orlando, were taken to Shands Hospital, but there is no update on their condition. More than four months after a Marion County man was shot and killed, sheriff deputies are charging a man with this murder. On June 26, deputies say Jeffrey Aaron went to 39-year-old Jamal Diddy Jefferson to buy cocaine. While an argument ignited and investigators say Jefferson admitted to shooting Aaron, detectives learned that Jefferson and his girlfriend, Michelle Cruz, abandoned Aaron's vehicle near Daytona Beach. Plus, Jefferson and his brother, Jackson Crown, dumped Aaron's body in East Orlando. Crown remains in the Marion County Jail with no bond. In covering the state, police executed a search warrant at a Central Florida animal shelter and seized, get this, 100 cats and 26 dogs. A deputy police chief says they received multiple complaints about conditions at an animal rescue in DeLand before the raid on Thursday. A veterinarian accompanied officers as they executed the search warrant. They removed all 126 animals from the facility and the dogs were placed in temporary homes. Some of them have been reclaimed by their former owners. City officials are working to place the cats at another rescue center. A task force will review the special needs policies of a school district months after a seven-year-old student's death. The girl died a day after choking and losing consciousness aboard a school bus. The bus driver was following district policy by calling a bus dispatcher instead of 911. Well, the school board met Thursday and decided to let bus drivers know in an emergency, quote, they are urged to use good judgment and common sense and have the autonomy to call 911 if necessary, end quote. Well, time now to get our first look at the weather with our meteorologist Mike Potter. Mike, it is Friday. It is homecoming. Nice mm -hmm. blue tie, by the way. <laughs> but uh, how's the weather going to be looking at? Oh, su okay. Superman. Uh, Where's yours? That's what I'm wondering. Mine, got, mine is a little bit damaged. but um, <laughs> Damaged? A little bit damaged. Uh, but right. how's the weather looking for uh, homecoming today? Looking good. That's good. Yeah, I can rock with that. You cannot beat the weather we've got out there right now. It was kind of cold this morning, though, mm -hmm. and actually frost in parts of the area, but starting to warm up across the area. Currently, we're looking at a bright, sunny day out there. Perfect day for a parade and a perfect evening coming up for Gator Growl over at the swamp. Uh, later on this evening around 7 o'clock, uh, skies are crystal clear. Some clouds offshore in the Atlantic, but uh, nothing on the radar, even with those clouds that are off of Daytona Beach. So for us, it's a dry afternoon, a comfortable afternoon, and we're already in some places warmer than where we were yesterday for the high, mostly mid to upper 60s now. We're heading to the 70s this afternoon. We'll talk more about uh, the forecast for this evening and, of course, the weekend. Of course. Saturday, Sunday. Forecast coming up in just a few. All right, thank you, Mike. Right. The UF Homecoming Parade is a long-standing tradition in Gainesville, and today it's honoring a war great. TV20's Kyla Ryan is live at the 89th Annual Homecoming Parade at the University of Florida, where she's been talking to people ready for the UF Homecoming Weekend. Good afternoon, Kyla. How you feel? Duke, you're in luck. The parade actually just started behind. 
Looks like she's having fun out there. Well, for the 89th year, Gator Grout takes over Gainesville, but this year it will be a little different. The event takes place tonight and features music by Josh Turner and comedy from Tracy Morgan. To join in on Veterans Day weekend, Gator Grout has partnered with the Wounded Warrior Project, which means the better the turnout, the more money they can give. The event kicks off tonight starting at 7. Many gas stations in the New York metropolitan area are still without power due to Hurricane Sandy. And Mayor Michael Bloomberg says that approximately 25% of the city's roughly 800 gas stations were open yesterday. As ABC's TJ Winnick reports, New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, has ripped the state's utility companies for their lack of preparation. With hey, thanks for coming back. Well, nothing's more American than a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, but preparing for the feast does not have to starve your budget. Money reporter Stacy Johnson has five easily digestible tips to keep the cost down. And we're going to get a final look at the weather with our meteorologist, Mike. A good day to go dancing as you were doing in the <laughs> break. <laughs> Do that again. Do sure. That boom, again. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was that good. <laughs> but, uh, it's, there's nothing better than the weather we've got out there this afternoon. We're in the upper 60s now, heading to the low 70s this afternoon. For Gator Grout tonight, figure on temperatures falling through the 50s with a light breeze out there should be uh, really nice. And uh, the game tomorrow, starting just afternoon time, obviously in the morning it'll be well down in the 40s, uh, and then it looks like kickoff temperature around 74, and then ending up around 76, 77 towards the very end of the game. Uh, looking like a good weather forecast for that, and mm -hmm. for the rest of the weekend too, as we warm up to about 80 sunshine and some clouds on Sunday. Looks cool. Good. So carry a windbreaker for tomorrow's game as well. Uh, Let me spray yourself for it. It'll be okay. Okay. Tonight, cool. keep it with you. Go Gators. Have a great weekend. <laughs>